Welcome back to another video where we talk about the weather. And we don't talk about the weather casually like you would somebody on the side of the street that you're trying to make small talk with. Well, how about that weather today, huh? No, no, we get deep into it. Today, we're gonna be talking about a powerful winter storm that's making its way across the northern part of the United States. And then beyond that, somebody east of the Rocky Mountains is getting ready to get a big major winter storm at the end of January. We're watching closely to try to figure out who exactly that's gonna be. If you are interested in that, make sure you are subscribed to this channel because I've been making videos like this every day and we're gonna be tracking all the storms as we go on into the future and you're not gonna to wanna to miss a video. So without further ado, let's get right into it and talk about the weather. All right, here we go. Here's a view of the entire United States of America and you're probably thinking, what the heck are we looking at, Ryan? Is this radar reflectivity? <laughs> no, no, it's not. Actually, what we're looking right here is information from the NAM three kilometer model showing potential wind gusts as we go into the future with this first storm that we're talking about. And just look at this big area of high wind that comes through the Midwest, down through the Rockies, all the way down into Oklahoma and Texas. I mean, uh, this is one of the bigger wind events I've seen in a really long time. We've got a low pressure system up north and a high pressure system down in the southwestern part of the United States. It's working together to create these wind conditions. And some of these winds are going to be over hurricane force winds. That's right. We got major winter storms, flooding, hurricane force winds. I mean, it's it's crazy out there right now. Here we are about 4.30 p.m. today. Look at these projected wind gusts. We're talking about just west of Billings, Montana, 82 7 miles an hour. Up near Great Falls, we're looking at 84. I saw 84 miles an hour there. Oh my God. Even down in Wyoming, we've got a wide swath of 79 miles an hour. Uh, we got 79 miles an hour right there. And the whole state, even just sustained winds, we're talking about 30, 40, maybe 50 miles an hour. And then as we move that forward, that's going to affect big time parts of South Dakota and North Dakota, all the way down into Nebraska. We've got wind gusts that can be 60, 70 miles an hour, all the way down to central Nebraska. I mean, that's big time. And then look up here in the mountains just west of Denver. Once again, hurricane force winds associated with this winter storm. And as we play this on out all the way through tomorrow, the winds just stick around. Colorado, Nebraska, Wyoming, South Dakota, just a widespread area with uh, over 50 mile an hour winds. And if we keep putting it into motion, this goes all the way down into Texas. Some places could see 30, 40 mile an hour wind gusts as this just big plume of air comes down. And then eventually it finally lets up as we go later on into the day on the 15th. But let's play out this animation again. Here comes this big bowling ball of air. And then you can really see that circulation of the of the low pressure system just west of Lake Michigan. So yeah, we are dealing with a powerful winter storm here. And that's why we are seeing the National Weather Service issue all of these watches and warnings all the way down into Kansas. We've got high wind warnings, high wind watches. And then already over here in Wisconsin and Minnesota, we've got winter storm watches and winter weather advisories. But just a huge area of high wind warnings here. And like they're very well warranted because this is going to be an extreme event. Like we're a couple hundred miles away from the center of the low pressure system here and there's just going to be intense winds and there is snowpack on the ground. So what we're going to see is probably like a ground blizzard where in these areas, even though it's only going to be snowing lightly, snow that's on the ground will be lifted up by the wind and be driven by the wind at 60, 70 miles an hour. And it's literally going to be like a blizzard outside. So with no exaggeration here, we are looking at extremely dangerous situations in Montana, North and South Dakota, Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, and Kansas. Let's take a look at the future a little bit and see what the impacts of this storm are going to be for everybody else. We can do that on the weather models. All right, here we go. This is the NAM 12 kilometer. Here's our storm that we're looking at right now. This is going to continue going east. And whenever it gets right around here, it's weird. Its energy kind of gets transferred down to this low pressure system. And that's the one that's going to kind of sit here and kind of spin around for a minute. That's going to cause a cold front to spark up another low pressure system over here that may bring snow to the interior northeast. Let's watch all that happen. We're putting it in motion. Here comes the transfer. Watch this. We've got cold air coming down and heavy snow in Wisconsin, Iowa, and Minnesota. And then this just kind of spins and deepens and sends some more cold air all the way down south into Texas and Louisiana. And as we keep on going, just a lot, it just kind of sits there right on the border of Wisconsin and Minnesota, which means that a lot of places up here are going to get a decent amount of snowfall. It's not going to come down extremely heavy, but there's going to be a prolonged period of light to moderate snow showers, and there's going to be enough cold air there for it to stick. Now I'm going to keep playing this forward. Watch this area over here. That cold front's going to interact with some gulf moisture and it's going to try to create another storm. Here's our troublemaker right here, still sitting over Lake Michigan, and we've got another storm forming. This is Saturday the 16th that we're looking at, so we're only three days out, and that is going to try to cause some snow problems for areas of central Pennsylvania, upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and into Maine. Unfortunately, it looks like the coastal areas are going to be too warm. It looks like this is going to be a rain event for you guys, but just to your north, there's a pretty good shot that somebody's going to see a decent amount of snow from this. Also, watch the Ohio Valley region here as that low 
pressure system spins. Um, I really think that if you live in Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, West Virginia, that area, I think there's a lot of opportunities for us to see some really intense snow squalls from this system. This won't be like a long-term heavy snowfall where it's snowing all day and just piling up, but it's gonna be one of those situations where a really intense snow squall will hit. You might get an inch or two pile up and then it, most of that will melt or dissipate before the next one shows up. And then as we play that on out, this low pressure system gets down to a 984 millibars right on the last frame there of the NAM. And we're talking heavy snow in uh, southeastern parts of Canada, and maybe even a little bit of mix on the northern part of Maine here. So that will have some impacts up there. Nothing too crazy, nothing you know out of the ordinary here, but that's what we can expect with our first storm. I do wanna go back here and look at the snow totals for this area because we are imminent now, we're right on this storm. I wanna let you guys know about how much snow you can expect. Let's put this into motion. Let's see how much snow falls for everybody. And we were looking yesterday at possibly central Minnesota being the sweet spot for this storm, but some of our shorter range models are now saying that it's gonna be right on the border there where that low pressure system really hangs out. That's where we're gonna see our highest snowfall totals. We can see 10 inches of snow in northern Wisconsin. All of northwestern Wisconsin can see more than six inches of snow. In Duluth, Minnesota there, it looks like you can still see seven or eight inches of snow. And a lot of these totals come from when that low pressure system is sitting here turning, you're going to see some bands of snow come off Lake Superior and it's just gonna drop a bunch of snow for whoever gets right underneath that right band. And then as you can see, we've got traces of snow all the way down into Southern Missouri, all of Illinois, into Kentucky, maybe a little bit of Tennessee. And this is what's gonna happen with those snow squalls as they pop up. Now this is underdone for some people and it's overdone for some people. If you live right here in Kentucky, it's showing that you can get a trace of snow, but this model that we're looking at really can't see exactly how fine tuned these snow squalls are gonna be. I wouldn't be surprised if anybody in this area could get one to three inches of snow, but it's gonna be isolated. You might be in Paducah, Kentucky and get no snow at all, but just to your north in Indiana, they can have two or three inches of snow on the ground from an intense snow squall. Okay, let's take a look at the northeast too. Now this doesn't show the entire storm, but it looks like northeast uh, Pennsylvania can see two or three inches, maybe four. Upstate New York could see the same amount in Syracuse. Looks like maybe you could possibly get five inches of snow. And then up here in Maine and New Hampshire and northeast New York, I really do think that this area has the potential to get a pretty significant amount of snow once everything's set and done. Unfortunately, everybody on the coast here, once again, <laughs> this looks like a no snow event for you, but we have shots moving into the future. I promise something's gonna happen here and we've just gotta keep watching the models and hoping for something to pop up. All right, let's look at one more view of this storm in the upper air. This will help us see the jet stream and the movement of that cold air as it moves down into Southern parts of the United States. And it should be interesting. So let's put this into motion. Here's our storm. It just slides right through here. It's gonna come down into the South central portion of the United States. And when it does, it's just gonna buckle that jet stream. And this looks really good in the upper air, but a lot of this cold air doesn't make it to the surface. It's gonna be cold, but not as cold as it could be. It's no polar vortex kind of thing. And then as we keep putting it into motion, this is going to retreat back up north. And it's gonna keep a lot of that cold air in the upper portions of the atmosphere. Watch it here, it tries to retreat up north and then we have another little ball. And we looked at this the other day, it kind of looks like a pinwheel of a potential low pressure systems that could form. And the long range GFS shows this well, we're gonna have multiple opportunities opportunities for storms as we move forward. All right, let's take a look at a broader view of the precipitation on the Euro model. Here's our first storm as it comes down and it kind of just cycles around there. Here's our opportunity for snow squalls in Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia, and even on the Euro as, as far down south as very northern Alabama and Georgia. It's possible you guys could see some snow squalls with this. And our storm up here in New York, New Hampshire, and Maine is showing up really well. And then as we keep playing this all the way out, um, I think the last frame here, this has, this is the 12 Z Euro. It hasn't formed all the way, but on the last frame here, you can see something really interesting. This is something we've been watching for a long time. I've, I've been telling you guys, something's going to happen with this. I don't know what it is, but something's going to happen with it. It has to, or we've wasted all this time looking at the daggone forecast models for nothing. No, oh, I just refreshed and one more, <laughs> one more frame loaded. Uh, it looks to me like this is the beginning stages of a pretty interesting a storm that could become a southern slider right here or possibly a nor'easter. It doesn't look like we're gonna get all the information for this video, but we have two other models that I like to look at, so let's look at those right now. Here's the Canadian, here's a look at our first storm. It comes right down out of Canada, spins around a little bit, and our second one is right here. Once again, northern Pennsylvania, upstate New York, all of New Hampshire, Maine, and Vermont. You guys look like you might be in a, in a little bit of snow town. I mean, all of us are jealous, but you guys are, you know, you're used to this stuff. Let's keep 
playing it out. Here's all of our, there's so many opportunities for some really cool snow squall events happening right here. I don't want to talk too much about it, but I know there's some people that watch in Ohio and in Indiana and Illinois. Guys, watch out from tomorrow all the way through the 16th of January. We're going to have off and on snow squalls. Some of them could be intense. Right, let's keep playing this out. Let's see what it does with that other storm. Here's that Gulf moisture. You can just see it so clearly. It's just bubbling up in Texas and it, it wants to be played with. Let's see what the Canadian says. And here we go. Okay. This just kind of comes up this way, meets with that cold air, produces a pretty intense ice storm for areas of Kentucky, Southern Ohio, Central Indiana, all the way into West Virginia there. This looks really interesting. All right, let's see what else it does with it. It moves it up north a little bit. Here we have some more ice and snow in uh, Western Pennsylvania, and it looks like New Jersey and Eastern Pennsylvania is getting in on the snow right here. Let's play that on through, and it just kind of it goes out to sea once again. It looks to me <laughs> like it, it just it starts going this way because it's getting affected by something up here. Maybe it's all these high pressure systems teaming up on it but it just goes out to sea in that way and i just i don't see that happening i really see this continuing up the coast there is still potential for this storm to to not do this at all it, there's a potential for it to form down here and go up the coast this way there's a potential for it to be an apps runner and really cut put down a lot of snow for people in kentucky ohio indiana and tennessee there's a potential that it does a little bit of both and then kind of like comes up like this and then goes east there's just so many different opportunities and possibilities here and i know we all want to be in snow town but there's only going to be a few that win with this storm. This is going to be a very dynamic system, and I can't wait to watch it unfold. And I'm very happy that we're getting all these signals from all the models now that show on the 20th through the 23rd of January, we're going to have something interesting to watch. All right, let's take a look at the 12Z GFS, see what she has to say. Here's our first storm right here, just cranking it up in Iowa. Look at that 540 line all the way down into uh, Louisiana. That's going to bring some pretty good cold air with it. And as we push it forward, the GFS is very weak with our secondary system that forms on the cold front. So it's not showing snow for Northern Pennsylvania or nearly as much snow for upstate New York. But everything else that we're looking at does show that. So I think that the GFS may be an outlier here. And here's our snow squalls in Eastern Kentucky, Southern Ohio, especially right off the lake here in Northern Indiana. If we really do get this kind of flow coming in, that's gonna be really good for lake enhanced snow. And let's take a look at the future here. GFS shows another storm popping up over here. There's a possibility that can move a little bit West and cause some snow for areas on the coast, but we're not going to look too deep into that right now. All right, here comes our storm that we're looking for. Once again, you can just see all that moisture bubbling up. That's what you want to see when we have cold air in place. And we don't have a lot in place at this period. I think the polar vortex that we were looking at a week or two ago was a little bit overhyped, but we do have it there. And if this storm can get strong enough, we don't need it. It'll pull the cold air down itself. It don't give a crap, man. Let's see what the GFS does with it. Already in Eastern Kentucky and Eastern Tennessee, we're looking at a 994 millibar low pressure system going up the Appalachian. Appalachian Mountains. We've got rain changing to snow in all of Ohio, Indiana, Western Kentucky, some parts of Missouri and Illinois. And then as we play that forward, we've got an area of very heavy snow that was affected by that Christmas Eve and Christmas Day storm that we saw earlier. All of West Virginia, some places in Western uh, Pennsylvania near Pittsburgh can be seeing heavy snow. And as we play that on out, it does continue to get stronger. It deepens as it comes up here, but these areas right on the coast are staying a rain event uh, according to this model run. We are 225 hours away. Take this with a grain of salt. But all three of the fabulous three bottles, the Euro, the Canadian, and the GFS are agreeing now that we're gonna be looking at something during this time. And then let's keep on playing it. And the GFS says, hey, looky here, we're gonna send in some more cold air, some reinforcements. And we've got a major snowstorm up there in Michigan and Wisconsin. This tries to make it into the New England region. Looks like a pretty significant ice storm at this point. And and then that brings in a lot of cold air to this area right here. And it really just hangs out. Look, usually whenever we get cold air that comes in really fast like that, especially in the South Central and Southeastern part of the United States, it goes out just as quick as a ridge usually forms up and tries to fill its place. But according to the GFS, it's gonna be sticking around for a little while. That is a prolonged period of cold air. Nothing extremely intense right here, but it's cold air. And that's as far as the GFS goes. Right on the last frame, we've got another opportunity right here for storm to come 
down, interact with that cold air, and give us our storm. I think the number one thing that we should be looking out for, the number one thing that we should be watching is this storm right here that occurs around the 20th of January. After we get through our first storm here and our first opportunity for some snow, this is the storm that we've got to watch out for that could possibly be a major winter storm for a lot of people east of the Rockies that haven't seen a lot of snow this year. I know Missouri, Indiana, Western Kentucky, this place, I mean, you guys are in a snow drought. These guys are in a snow drought too, but... You know, we're going to have to see something really interesting to come together for, for both of these areas to win in the snow game. I think if this storm goes one way, you guys could win, but it would have to go another way for you guys to win. So it's not going to be like a win-win situation. No matter what, though, we're going to have fun tracking it. Make sure you're subscribed, guys. This is fun. Is this not fun? Are you guys are you guys not having fun? Speaking of fun, let's take a look at the overall snow potential for the next 384 hours. Once again, right here on the coast in uh, the northeastern part of the United States. You guys are shafted. You guys are in a snow dome. If I could, I would come over there and tear it down for you so you could get all the snow. But unfortunately, I think you're just in a wrong position for the pattern that we're in. Now that could change. We, there's a lot of interesting things that can happen with this second storm that we're looking at. But the GFS believes all the snow is gonna be kept north of this line. Maine's gonna get dumped on with snow. Vermont, New Hampshire, upstate New York. Interestingly, uh, Western Pennsylvania down into Eastern Ohio has a really good chance of seeing some snow with these upcoming storms. Now we've looked at model runs just a couple days ago that had the bullseye for snow all the way as far south as central Tennessee and South Carolina. So tomorrow when we look at this again, this could shift a little bit. This could change. I mean, look at this. This is the 12Z. Let's look at the 6Z. Just one run ago, this completely changes everything. Now it's showing Connecticut and Rhode Island as the uh, the hot spot. And if we go one run behind that, this is the 0Z. <laughs> look at this. That right there, that's like the perfect storm for a lot of people. This would affect areas in western Kentucky, southern Indiana and then go all the way over into Southern New Jersey. So as you can see, things are changing in a wave, but as we get closer, that wave's gonna get smaller, and eventually we're gonna know exactly what's going on. So once again, stay tuned. All right, guys, that's all the weather talk I have for you today. I hope you're enjoying these uh, long range discussions. I, I try to use the beginning of the video to talk about what's imminent, to talk about the current conditions and, and, and the storms that are happening within the next two or three days. And I like to use the latter half of the video to talk about the long range stuff because that's what's fun. I saw a comment somewhere on the internet the other day that said the long range GFS past 200 hours is like a free OnlyFans for weather lovers. And that's so true, a lot of times it'll show some unrealistic things, but it is fun to look at. And that's what this channel is about. We're here to have fun and talk about the weather. If you're having fun, make sure you like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave me a comment down below. Let me know. Do you think this second storm that we're looking at on the 20th of January, around that time frame, who do you think that storm is going to impact the most? You think it's gonna be a Southern slider and trying to give Tennessee and maybe some parts of Virginia some snow? You think we're gonna have an apps runner and then Western Kentucky, Indiana, and Ohio are the winners? Or do you think this is gonna end up a nor'easter and really give some snow to those people in uh, Maryland and Southern New Jersey that have been missing it in Delaware? I wanna know what you think is gonna happen. Make sure you leave that comment. Once again, make sure you're doing your snow dance. I'm gonna be doing mine all night long. And we'll be back here tomorrow to look at these weather models and see what they say, okay? I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.